Hey witches, I'm back again. I decided I'm gonna do one more video today on another um, question that someone asked me. Kristen, she asked me to tell more paranormal stories um, of things I've witnessed or helped with. So, I kinda I haven't done one of these videos in quite a while. Ever since I did my previous videos, scary witch stories. Um, I think that's like the only time I really shared stories like this. But I love talking about stories like this in person. And I like the idea of doing videos about this type of stuff and just sharing experiences. So... I have some I want to share um, for this video today. So, hang on a second. Because I want to light this up. And have another sip of coffee. So, which one do I want to start off with? I guess I kind of want to tell some creepy ones because, you know, we're getting closer to the fall and autumn here in the Northern Hemisphere and so I'm starting to feel that vibe in the air of, you know, the changing seasons and that kind of spookiness that one begins to feel as the veil starts thinning. Um, I've been seeing orbs a lot recently again um, and sort of feeling the presence of my ancestors more strongly and having dreams of them as well recently so you know I can feel the bell thinning and I just thought that this was a perfect topic to talk about right now so uh, don't y'all just love that line okay the first story I want to tell was years ago before I was even a practicing witch. Um, I've always had abilities and sort of a psychic uh, awareness but as far as like practicing witchcraft and all of that this was before then. So at this particular uh, time of the, of the telling of the story I was still Christian from my upbringing and I was like twelve, thirteen, somewhere around that age. Um, so this particular story happened at my uncle's house um, here in the town where I live right now. And, um, I was there and hanging out with my cousins, um, and who, they're, who are, they're all younger than me. Um, so I was like 12 or 13 and they were all younger than me. <laughs> and we were hanging out in their backyard and they had a trampoline and it was a nighttime or it had the sun had started setting while we were outside on the trampoline and uh we like stopped sort of jumping on it and more so we're just like sitting there and we just started talking and um looking at the stars and just sort of just you know hanging out and somehow 
we ended up starting talking about um, God and angels and I think also fallen angels or something like that I honestly really cannot remember that conversation <laughs> um, or what have you but an interesting thing happened or a rather creepy thing happened actually so as we're all just like sitting there and it was me um, my younger cousin Sean um, his little sister Valerie and also my little brother John and we were all out there and we were just like talking about these random things um and like I said it's like the conversation became sort of spiritual in that regard of talking about God and angels and more or less demons but I'm pretty sure we were saying fallen angels or something like that um but basically I got this feeling that there was a presence and I've always had a strong intuition like I said I've always had psychic awareness um even before I like realized what it, what it was even at all or that it was psychic I just got this very uneasy feeling that something was present um like watching us or something and I didn't want to scare like I said they were all younger than me so I didn't want to scare them so I didn't like pronouncedly point it out but I did feel like this uneasy feeling for like probably 10 minutes um, before one of them I don't remember who it was but one of them like all of a sudden notices this entity um, off to the side of the yard which is go merging into the neighbor's yard they didn't have a fence or anything so it was just like literally their yard going for so far and then into the neighbor's yard and their neighbor had a shed sort of right at the border of where the properties emerged and there was like in front of the shed door on the ground like directly on the earth ground there was a like something rising up and it was like a dark first of all this was nighttime at this point because we've been out there since sunset so it was already like nighttime and there was like this dark figure slowly rising up out of the ground and we were all just like staring at it. I, I forgot who pointed it out, but once it was pointed out, we were just like all fixated on watching it because it was like there and we were like, what the fuck? I'm sure. Um, but I, at first I was like, what is that? Because you couldn't really tell what it was. Um, it just looked like a dark, shadowy mass uh, with no particular shape or anything so but it was like slowly rising up out of the ground so we're all just like staring at it watching it right and once again we're on the trampoline so this is probably about like only 15 feet away or 20 feet away tops from the trampoline <laughs> So we're like watching this happen. I think immediately uh, my little brother like started panicking about it. 
and he made my cousin Sean, who was the second oldest compared to me, um, like run inside and get my sister to come outside and get him from the trampoline instead of just going inside himself. So that happened and my sister came out um, and we were still like staring at this thing when she came out there but I don't think she really paid it any mind for some reason she just like got my little brother and she went back inside um, and me and my cousin Sean I don't know if Valerie went inside too or not I can't remember but basically, we stayed out there and we just kept watching it. And, um, you know, I was more or less kind of curious of what it was, even though it was kind of like bizarre. But it did get to a point where it actually became creepy. Because what happened is it rose up to like a certain height, uh, probably like about... I want to say about three feet high so as we were watching this thing though it literally rose up from the ground level like it was coming out of the earth like it was just rising up very slowly though and when it when it got to about like three feet high the wind sort of blew or picked up or whatever and um, that's when we actually saw some details of this entity because the wind blowing revealed that it was wearing some sort of like cloak with a hood and like with the cape or whatever and whenever the wind blew it like billowed the cape part back first of all and that's when, you know, we really were able to tell, like, this was something wearing a fucking cape, first of all, instead of just being a black mask. And then the wind also blew its hood up. Um, but it wasn't, like, gusting wind. It was, like, a very soft, I think this was in the summertime, it was, like, a soft, breezy wind to where like the hood slowly like lifted and then like flapped back down and then went back up again kind of like slowly and um whenever it did that we saw these huge red eyes looking out from underneath that hood and like it just took our breath away like once it revealed that we were just like whoa and I'm pretty sure we all got scared at that point but being as me being a spiritual person, even when I was in the Christian paradigm, so I basically confronted this entity and I was like, you know, I was, I just started saying what you're trained to say as a Christian, whatever I rebuke you, um, basically trying to banish it. And that was my intention. So I confronted it in that way and I just kept saying that to it and sure enough it uh, slowly started sinking back down into the ground and we, we literally stayed out there the whole time during this entire event but it, sa it sank all the way back down into the ground flat again but it looked like as if its cloak or its cape was left behind on the ground right there so we never got off the trampoline we, we stayed there the whole time but we didn't we didn't also retreat either we stayed our ground and like watched this shit happen and confronted it and after it like went back into the ground but its cape was still there we still stayed outside for quite a bit longer before we finally went inside or whatever but we never went and looked um at that 
part of the ground until the next day in the morning time. And when we went and looked there, there was no cape or anything, but there was huge cracks in the ground. Um, all in that, in that spot or in that area. So it was really weird. Um, but that was one of my like, first one of my first experiences with what I guess what I would consider like a demon or something but just the spiritual realm in general as well um, as far as that goes so that's the first story I wanted to share we ended up telling I forgot to say we ended up telling everyone whenever we went inside that night we told everyone um, what we had seen and they were just like y'all are crazy for staying out there and all of this and then just like sort of chuckled about it but I don't know I just felt like I needed to confront it even at that age so I've always been that way but um Yes, that was one of my very first sort of encounters with that type of stuff. Okay, so there's that story. Let me think which one I want to tell next. Ugh, I hate how squeaky this chair is. I didn't plan out what stories I'm going to tell, so I just have to kind of think for a minute. I think I'll tell a story of okay I'm gonna jump now forward into the future from that past story um, I was okay this is gonna be a story sort of like about a what I want to call it sort of one of my first dabblings into witchcraft I guess um, yeah I'll just say it like that it's one of my first Rather, I wouldn't want to say it's dabbling because I never dabbled in witchcraft. I've always taken it quite seriously. But sometimes I do, or and more so at the beginning of my path, I would just like jump into a tradition um, or magical system and just do a ritual within that system without doing foundational work of that system first. Um, and I don't regret it, but I'm a little bit more thorough now when I delve into new systems. But with this particular experiment or experience, I was with. A friend of mine who was also a witch um, he actually just passed away last year but this took place back in when was it probably like 2015 
I don't know why I said that. <laughs> I meant to say 2005. Um, Mercury retrograde. But um, what happened is basically we were practicing from the book Mastering Witchcraft by Paul Hewson. And there's a ritual in that book to basically like cast a circle, call on the quarters, just that simple basic ass ritual. But we were like super fucking beginners during that period. So we like didn't know what we were doing and we weren't approaching it from any type of experience mindset so I'm pretty sure we were both sort of like intimidated by it which is a big thing that I'm going to go ahead and just insert some knowledge in here um, if you are feeling fear when you do any kind of magic you're tainting the magic because magic comes from you, from your emotions, from your thoughts. So if you feel fear when you're casting a spell, more or more than likely, you're going to manifest something to be afraid of, okay? Um, which I know that now. But once again, as a beginner, more or less, during this time period, you know, I didn't know any better. So we started doing that ritual um and we also did something else that's like sort of a no-no as well which was basically we involved someone else who was not even into witchcraft or anything like that which i'm sure she was like terrified of it as well um even more so than us so <laughs> Um, basically, you know, what they say when you're casting a circle and stuff, and when you're doing magical rituals, especially when you're a beginner, they say that things will manifest outside of the circle, and more or less, you're supposed to not let it distract you. Because, more or less, they are just low-level entities, low-level spirits that are fucking with you because you're a beginner. So they'll either try to distract you or, you know, fuck with you on a spiritual level. Because when you cast a circle, when you open that gateway, um, you're opening yourself to see the spirit world and interact with it but you're also opening yourself for the spirit world to see you and interact with you so this is important to know when you're a beginner that that's what you're doing and um it is true especially when you're a beginner that low level entities will be attracted to you to try to fuck with you because you are a beginner and you don't know what you're doing um so more or less that's what happened in this story um it was me my friend who was a guy and he was a witch too and I had called him over to my house when no one was home and I was like let's do this ritual let's do an experiment and see if we can just simply uh, cast a circle and call on the spirits or whatever I just wanted to see what would happen because once again this is was during my experimental phase of just really sort of getting into doing rituals um, as opposed to 
like natural magic and stuff that I was already doing with the, like the elements and stuff and, and weather witching and basic magic like that um, that doesn't really require a ritual or spirits um, so I was wanting to experiment with this other type of magic of that type of ritual and spirit work and stuff calling the corners and all of that so that's what we planned out to do no one was home at my house so we had the house to ourselves and we were just gonna do it but at the time my brother's girlfriend came by the house and like literally right before we were gonna do the ritual she just showed up there and she was like looking for my brother but he wasn't there and she ended up sort of just like staying there and hanging out with us anyway um I guess like waiting for my brother if he might show up or something I don't know but uh because she was not into magic or witchcraft or anything at all so I can only imagine that she must have viewed us as weird as fuck but she still stayed there anyway um so I'm assuming she was waiting for my brother to show up but he never did but um basically me and my friends still wanted to do our ritual and so we were like oh you shut up just in time because now there will be three people doing the ritual if you help us do it and so it took like forever to convince her to do it with us um and like i said i mean even i was even intimidated by doing the ritual because it was my first time and I didn't know what to expect and so I was sort of like intimidated a little bit scared um, but still going forward into it anyway so I can only imagine how scared she was um, and I don't know what level <laughs> of scared my friend was who was also a witch um, but I know that we were all scared to go forward with it and I know looking back now of course that that tainted the outcome even worse than just the beginners whole process of you know when you open that doorway for the first time lower level spirits fuck with you no matter what because it's your first time so you just have to know what to expect and all of that but anyway, then just having a bunch of fear stacked up on it, uh, it just attracts more darker spirits and shit in. And uh, that has a negative influence. Your own fear taints the magic itself to manifest something to be scared of, like I said. So basically what happened is that we finally convinced um we finally convinced her to participate with us in casting the circle <laughs> which seems so fucking basic and simple now looking back on it and i'm just sharing the story now i think it's hilarious but um we convinced her to participate in casting the circle um and so we were like let's first we were like debating whether we wanted to do it inside in my room or to go outside and do it so basically I wanted to go outside and do it so I think that was like another huge debate too because I think that predominantly she was scared to do it outside even more than inside so um, which I was too but I still wanted to do it outside anyway because I was like I don't want to open a fucking gateway in my house and then like not be able to shut it so I was like let's just do it outside for that safety precaution <laughs> 
So, um, originally when we finally decided or got her to, to, got her to agree to do it outside, um, she ended up like chickening out again whenever we got outside. And I don't blame her because it was so fucking dark that night. Like, it was like the darkness was thick. Um, like, I know nights like that. Or maybe it was just where we lived. Because there was like, it was kind of like on the edge of town. With like nothing but fields and shit. In the back of our house. And, uh... Uh, that's I was wanting to do it in the backyard kind of like a, a little bit away from the house like I said because I didn't want to open a gateway and then not be able to shut it in my house so I was like let's do it back there that way you know if something does go down it will at least be out there and not in here so that was my whole logic so like I said we get outside we have like four different candles taking them out there with us to put at the four quarters but it, like I said it was like the darkness it almost seemed like the darkness was alive that night like it seemed like it had a thickness to it and a substance to it and I don't know if it was just the fact that we were all like in a heightened state of being a little bit intimidated and, and scared or if there was just some something going on with the energy, I don't know. But there's only certain times throughout my life that I've ever experienced the nighttime in that kind of a way where it seems like it's really just foreboding and like extra fucking dark. It may have been a dark moon night even, I don't know, but it was so fucking dark, like... I don't know how to explain it other than to just say it was like the darkness was thick. So I don't blame her because whenever we got outside onto the porch and we're all just like sort of looking into the darkness and the direction that goes out of the outside of the bounds of the porch light into the back of the yard and we're, we kind of all just like stood there staring and no one was like walking forward and we were all just like, you know, I'm sure we all felt what I was uh, explaining is not going to go that foreboding feeling and the the thickness of the night um and so she's she's like let's just do it here on the porch and so there was like a small debate over that but we were like okay fine we'll just do it right here on the porch at least it's outside somewhat so we get we start setting up the candles in the four directions. She's holding the book and me and my friend are setting up the candles. And it was like immediately we could start to feel the presence coming um, around us. And I want to say it felt like it was focused in the trees. Because in front of our house there was like trees. And like pretty close to where some of the branches were like hanging even over where part of the circle was. And all we did was set up the four candles in the four quarters. We didn't even do like any kind of casting of a circle or anything yet and we could immediately start to feel a presence um, and it seemed like it was coming from like up in the trees and um, I, I think we all like felt it independently first and then we like were looking at each other and like not saying anything not wanting to uh, freak each other out more or maybe not wanting to just reveal that we might be freaking out about nothing. But eventually we all like realized that we were all sensing the same thing. So I was like, at that point, I was like, look, it says in the book that things will happen 
around the circle. It's just spirits trying to distract you. You know, this is normal. Let's keep going. Let's keep proceeding because I want to get in contact with the actual spirits that we're trying to get in contact with and open that gateway. I don't want to, I'm not just trying to uh, get spooked by the spooky spirits that come to fuck with you. I want to get in contact with the real spirits. Um, so I wanted, I, I was like determined to cast the circle anyway and call on the watchtowers and all of that. But, you know, <laughs> I could just imagine now looking back, I was like 15 during this time. So like, I did not give a fuck. But now looking back, like I cannot even imagine doing that to someone now. Like that girl must have been so fucking scared and weirded out. And we were just like basically uh, peer pressuring her into doing it with us. So I kind of feel like really bad about that looking back. But at the same time, it's kind of hilarious. Um, so anyway, I was just like so fucking determined on doing this and doing the fucking circle casting and seeing what would happen. But anyway, we, we still kept feeling like this presence, like watching us sort of like floating around in the trees and shit. So finally, you know, we get to the point to where we're going to start doing it. We find everything, all the candles are set up, they're all lit, and now it's finally time to start the actual ritual itself of casting the circle. A basic ass ritual. So, um, essentially, what happens is before I think we like right when we start even saying the words my friend the, the guy which like I don't know he like wigs out or something and he just like walks off off the porch into the backyard into the darkness and like me and my brother's girlfriend are just like looking at each other and we're like what the fuck what the fuck and um like none of us neither of us wants to like follow him but we're also like what the fuck is he doing so we're just like staring at each other and she's like I got a really bad vibe from this she's like I don't want to do it anymore and I was like okay you know what maybe you're right maybe we should just like not do this after all maybe we should just stop something's not right about it and she's like yeah it's just there's something about tonight let's just not do it tonight we can do it another time just not tonight um and I was like okay you're right you know there is something really fucking weird about this night it's the darkness seems fucking thick and it's just weird and now you know my friend is like acting fucking weird and just walked off into the fucking darkness in the back of the house by himself so, basically, me and her just put out the candles and we start taking the shit inside. And, like, we're going to get a flashlight or something and then go look for him. Uh, so, we take the stuff inside, we put it away, and then we're, like, looking for a flashlight. And then me and her just sort of, like talk and we're like something is off with him like it doesn't seem like it's just him acting like this so we're starting to consider like did he just get possessed or something by one of these lower level entities so we're a little bit freaked out by that even more so we kind of like loiter inside instead of, instead of going out to look for him and he, he ends up coming inside the house on his own. He comes into the room and he's acting like super cheery and 
just really fucking weird. Like, his, his personality is just completely fucking bizarre. And, like, cheery. And laughing and stuff. And, like, he's saying he, want, he wants to continue doing the ritual. And calling the quarters and stuff like that. And me and her are just totally freaked out at this point. Because we're like, what the fuck is this? Um, so, basically, ugh, I only have five minutes left on this video. Um, so, anyways, basically, I'm like, is he just fucking with us? Just trying to scare us or is he like actually possessed by something right now because I cannot tell but he's acting fucking weird like even if he is pretending um he's crazy then so I was like what the fuck and um I can like once again I can only just imagine how this girl felt about this whole situation so um basically I like try to talk to him and like reason him whatever reason with him to like but that we're not gonna do the fucking rest of the spell and or casting the circle or whatever and he just continue continues to act really fucking bizarre and wanting to do it and acting really fucking cheery about it and shit and uh eventually it comes to the point to where me and my brother's girlfriend like lock ourselves into my bedroom while my uh, my witchy friend is just like in my house I don't we don't know what he was doing or whatever but we were like freaked the fuck out by the way he was acting and shit and so basically I don't even know what the fuck was up with that like I don't know if he was possessed or if he was just pretending just to scare us I don't fucking know and I never found out the answer to that but uh like I knew him for years after that and shit and he never did anything like that again so I don't know but that was a really fucking bizarre thing. And, um, I think eventually, like, what happened is, like, how that night ended was me and my um, brother's girlfriend were like, well, we're gonna leave, uh, somewhere. So, we'll catch you later. Hang out with you next time. And basically, we just, like, went in her car. We basically, like, got him out of my house and locked the door and shit. And then, like, went in her car somewhere temporarily. And then she just dropped me back off, back at my house. And we basically just made him leave. Because he was acting fucking insane. Or possessed. I don't know. It was fucking bizarre. And I never talked to him about it, like, later. Because I was like, fuck that. So... <laughs> I don't know, but that was another really fucking weird experience, and I never, uh, we never, like, met up again with that girl, whatever, like, she, she was saying that, uh, like, how she had said, we'll do it another night, just not tonight, well, we never did it another fucking night, um, what happened, ultimately, with that situation is I ended up just doing the casting of the circle by myself at a later time and like it was perfectly normal I didn't experience anything bad or anything during that time so I don't know if um the collective energy of all three of us was like uh just a magnet for dark spirits to fuck with I don't know if one of them was more vulnerable or appealing to dark spirits in some kind of a way 
Um, or I don't know if my witchy friend really did get possessed or whatever. But um, I guess that's just like one of my weird fucking experiences. I'm telling us a story and uh, kind of a cautionary tale as well as far as the different tidbits of knowledge that I put in to the story and like how to do this stuff you know with a little bit of knowledge so that's basically it I guess I'm gonna do this video in sections because I only have like a few seconds left on this video so I, w I will tell more, more stories in part two to this video Alright.